Hey everybody, it's Steve Kajala here with a little explanation of this thing that I've been doing that a few of you have been interested in, which is the uh, the Mahler third trombone solo from the first movement, which I have um, uh, commandeered <laughs> for my own malevolent purposes. Uh, I've been playing around with the solo for over 20 years now uh, and turning it into a flute, a bunch of flute exercises, which I find very useful for warming up and ear training and all that kind of stuff. So um, some of you have already seen the clip that's that Alex took of uh, me when we were doing the Moana movie at the Warner Brothers a couple of days ago. So um, so why play a trombone solo on the flute? <laughs> well, I'll explain that in a minute, but let me first um, play the solo for you in its original key. Uh, I'm not going to write it out for you. Um, use, écoute, use your ear. It starts on a D. That's all I'm going to tell you. So that's the solo. And where that occurs in the first movement, it's really a, a concerto for trombone and orchestra, that first movement of the Third Symphony. It's a 35-minute movement. And the trombone is pretty much featured from the, almost the beginning to about where I just played, which is the nine and a half minute mark. And he's kind of playing around with that theme, the motif. He's stringing together stuff. He's teasing us. He's developing it. and. Then at the point where I started playing it is where all three top trombones are playing that in unison uh, fortissimo with the whole orchestra. And it's just very, I just gave myself goosebumps. <laughs> um, so uh, just a quick backstory. I first heard that solo uh, probably in the late, late 60s, maybe 67, 68 with a Chicago Symphony recording. I think it was probably Schulte, maybe uh, James Levine. And it was the great Jay Friedman, of course, playing the solo. And um, I just, I, it's just, it, it spoke to me. I mean, the whole, the playing, of course, and, and the, the symphony. And, of course, my dad's in the orchestra, so I had uh, extra, <laughs> an extra reason to love, love it as a recording. But also just the scope of the melody itself. I mean, I've always been a big Mahler fan. Um, but this melody is I mean, the flute doesn't really do it justice. It's really meant for the trombone. So I'm not trying to uh, give you any false impression that we're trying to, that I'm trying to compete with a trombone or anything like that. Um, but you notice that it's, it's a tall melody. <laughs> it's wide and it's deep. So um, it's just got a great compass to it. So what I did is I just started messing around with this thing. Uh, I, I learned it by listening to the record and picking out the notes. I was in high school, so I was already into jazz, into rock, playing guitar, and, um, and using my ears a lot. My first early compositions, um, my first foray into, into improvising, so I really was using my ear a lot. So I just picked out the tune, and if you want to rewind back to the beginning, you guys can pick out the tune too. And then I realized that um, that if I started transposing this uh, melody, this solo, into all 12 keys, that I could probably find some benefit from that. So, we start in D, the original key, and what I do is, near the end of the solo, uh, I deviate from the written solo uh, so that I can affect a transition into a modulation going a half step, uh, beginning a half step lower, the whole solo a half step lower. Same thing again, same thing again, same thing again. So that sounds like this.
So sometimes I'll do a no vibrato and just try to, as if I was a trombone or a French horn or a clarinet playing without vibrato because we flutists love to uh, use vibrato as a crutch sometimes. So I, I like to play some of uh, even our own solos in our repertoire without vibrato just for the hell of it, just to try it and then add the vibrato later. It, it helps kind of define what the musical line is supposed to be without the adornment of, uh, of the vibrato. So anyway, so the other thing I do is I do that solo very, very, very slowly so that I can make an intonation exercise of it. Because it's got every, uh, the long version of the solo has every interval within the uh, context of the, of the entire statement of the melody. Every single interval is accounted for there. tone? Do I want to make a temper? Do I, you know, all that kind of stuff. Etc. Et so I go all the way down as far as I can on the flute, and then when I run out of rope, I start up high, usually on a high A. Very slowly, same deal. Sometimes vibrato, sometimes straight tone, sometimes very, very, very slowly, sometimes more musically, depending on uh, what mood I'm in. Then, uh, the other video that you've probably seen is where I use a fingering exercise, um, which is comprised of the uh, probably two-thirds of the solo, and then I just modulate to a, a half-step lower, and that goes something like this. etc down to the bottom and then um, you know start anywhere you want up high You know, you can make it all legato, practice pianissimo, practice it loud, use different articulations, mix them up, mix and match. Um, so I just end up being creative about it. I, I never have any set routine, and sometimes I toggle back and forth between what I just did, the sort of a triplet, you know, um, uh, allegro tempo, uh, and then go back to the more adagio or lento tempo for, the, for all the other... Um, uh, things that I do from that and uh, it just the totality of it is that oops low battery the totality of it is that um, it's a great warm-up so if I have a like a session that starts at 10 o'clock and I got to get my ass up at 5 30 in the morning because it takes two hours to get to the west side or whatever um, I don't want to go to the studio and then be warming up for half an hour or an hour because it pisses people off <laughs> so I get up an uh, extra half hour early and before I have breakfast, I come down here in my living room and just go through those exercises because the the long version, the slow version of the Mahler uh, solo is like a, a, a glorified long tone exercise, but it's musical. Instead of just playing the Moise or whatever, um, you're at least doing something musical and you're waking up the lips and then eventually you wake up the fingers and then you're ready to roll. So. Um, so that's, uh, that's the history of that, and uh, you can take that for what it's, uh, what it's worth. 
and have fun with it. Now, um, oh, I'm already gone 10 minutes here, so I'm going to post another, another video where I uh, share some of the backstory of this between me and Alex Isles. So, bye.